Welcome to Free Media. I'm Amber Duke. And I'm Robbie Suave. Well, things are getting weird, according to the mainstream media. The latest talking point is that Donald Trump and J.D. Vance are uniquely off-putting to regular Americans. Pundits keep using the same word to describe the Republican ticket, weird. Is that kind of weird? Let's watch this. And so now we have in Vance and Trump I, one of the like weirdest tickets that I can recall. These are two really unusual people uh, who say and do weird things. Trump is out talking about the you know the shark and the boat and the battery and all the time and the late great Hannibal Lecter with all his eccentricities um, and and weirdnesses and and now you have J D Vance um, and then you have this dynamic between the two of them uh, which which is going to be fascinating. Weirder still, MSNBC commentator Molly Jong Fast thinks that Vance, a father of three biracial children, is obsessed with families having more white children. Watch. The stats are there. More and more Americans choosing not to have kids, which again emphasizes why J.D. Vance's comments right. about childless Americans, childless cat ladies, right. could be so politically damaging. Well, so what's interesting is this is this natalism that comes from an authoritarian playbook, right? That there there need to be more white children, right? That's the idea that there's, you know, this is about great replacement theory racism, right? This is what this is. So don't misunderstand it for him wanting more children. He wants a certain kind of, you know, racist Thing. I think that was pretty clear. He wants a certain kind of more racist thing. <laughs> Fair? <laughs> really helpful, Molly Jong Fast. Um, Nebo Baby Extraordinaire, by the way. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, he's married to an Indian woman. He has three biracial children. I think if you just go back to really the inception of J.D. Vance's political career, it was sort of born, uh, and I use that term, not intentionally, not in a way not to in a funny way. make Molly John Fast afraid of authoritarianism. <laughs> right. Um, but it was really about his background, obviously, coming up through rural America and some of the struggles of family creation and having stable families. And so he did really start out from a very pro-natalist perspective because he saw how members of his own community were either putting off or not having kids and the potential policy ramifications that that can have for society. And I thought Ross Douthat had a really great thread about this on X where he's like, yeah, saying even just the word pro-natalist sounds really weird, um, but it's actually a really important policy conversation to have. But then you fast forward and it's like all of this, uh, these things that J.D. Vance was talking about from a very academic perspective are now being used to paint him as really strange and or weird. And I think the question should be turned back around on the left a little bit, which is, why do you think it's weird to say that we should want to create the conditions where people want to create families? Right, exactly. I mean, I just think policy should not make it harder for people to raise families. Look, if people are freely choosing to have smaller families or to not have families, that's absolutely fine. They shouldn't be punished for that choice. But have we created an economic system, a government system, where everything associated with having a large family and having children is too expensive? from childcare, schooling, et cetera. And then can we have a conversation about what policies could be changed to make that easier on people? I'm sure some of the policies that the new right, the JD Vance's of the world are gonna propose, I would not necessarily disagree with. Other ones, maybe we can find common ground. You know, obviously we should be all for school choice. We should be for delicensing um, daycare workers, things of that nature, to make it easier, you know, the things that cost too much that tend to be the things that are most aggressively government licensed and subsidized, we should see if we can make government smaller and make that easier to have big families. And, and you know, other policies, I don't know, child tax credit is one that gets thrown out there. I want to like lower everybody's taxes and I want to specifically lower taxes for one group or the other, but maybe there's something to that. It's definitely not authoritarian or racist to be pursuing those ideas. Yeah, it was pretty incredible how there was a Kamala campaign surrogate who came out unintentionally against the child tax credit by arguing against J.D. Vance's comment that perhaps we should incentivize child rearing through the tax code. And uh, people started quickly pointing out that something like 75 to 80% of Americans support a child right. tax credit. And he managed to get the Kamala campaign to say that they were uh, opposed to it. But I mean, also just on the weird comment, like. I actually think J.D. Vance is sort of aggressively normal mm. in many ways. He's just sort of an all shucks Midwestern guy who's a little bit awkward on the campaign trail and maybe laughs a little bit too much, but generally speaking is 
I mean, sure. has a very comparable background to a lot, millions of Americans. Um, and then you look at some of the happenings of the Biden administration where they hired this guy to be in like the nuclear energy program that is stealing women's luggage from the airport and then cosplaying in their costumes on the uh, runway for like a progressive activist organization. Like, are we really gonna pretend that's not weird, but J.D. Vance is somehow the weird one? Yeah, I don't think J.D. Vance is the right target necessarily for that weirdness comment. I do think, I think some of what the very online right wing or conservative people put out there is that they'll take ideas that that you're right are not actually weird or that most Americans agree with that you know most Americans don't want progressive left-wing activists controlling their kids curriculum or schools or want to have more say over what their children are exposed to right that's not a weird idea that's something that's very popular but if you say that as the woke mind virus is taking over people's brains then you do sound weird when you phrase it that way does that make sense yeah it's it gets a little bit too online yeah, there's a too online category I wouldn't it is weird, but and I don't know that J.D. Vance is like the most serial offender of that. But there is a way that um, I think some on the online right can take ideas and concepts that are popular and make them sound off-putting, and they should try to refrain from that. But also, Twitter is not real life, and it, that's not the way the political figures are messaging on these issues, or shouldn't be. Yeah, and that's what strikes me as perhaps quite um, ineffective in, uh, from this messaging about Trump and Vance are just weird because I mean most, Trump is weird. Trump is I mean I mean he's I think I, nobody much cares. All politicians but he is, are weird. Well, they, and, right. And, and so I mean his antics are bizarre. I mean I'm not even saying that in a critical way. They're entertaining. <laughs> I like there is something weird about him, but no one everybody knows that already. Nobody's like waking up and going, "Oh my, I didn't realize how weird Trump was." Like yeah. that's not true. I guess my point is just that most people are not watching J.D. Vance's hour and a half long NatCon address or whatever. Yeah. Um, and when they're actually looking at what the Trump Vance ticket stands for, it's all fairly common sense, like normal stuff. Even if you mm -hmm. disagree with some of it, you're not gonna read it and be like, oh, that's really radical or bizarre. Like I would never even come anywhere close to touching that with a 10 foot pole. Whereas if you look at a lot of the positions that were espoused by Kamala Harris as recently as 2020, when she was running in the Democratic primary, they are pretty out of touch with the average American. So I would caution them on using these sort of subjective terms to describe their opponents when those things could very easily be turned back around on them because they actually have some pretty radical positions. Oh, but I'm being told by the media that everyone is just falling in love with Kamala Harris. We're gonna tackle that in a minute. More free media coming up next. Thank you.